diffraction due to diffraction due to single slit single slit intensity calculation intensity calculation okay s is a source of light it emits the light waves in all the directions to get the parallel beam of light rays we have to be take lens it renders the parallel beam of light rays these are traveling like this very long distances and also we want to focus those one on our screen it is kept at some distance that means mn is the screen we want to focus those rays on that screen we have to take one more lens this is the l1 this is the l2 by using this one we, we can focus that beam at a position p0 the, where p0 is the maximum intensity that is also called as principal maxima that is also called as principal maxima so during this propagation we have to be consider one slit this is a slit the width of this slit is the width of this slit is small a the width of this slit is small a we have already discussed this one now when these rays are parallel beam of rays are strikes the slit automatically they will bend that means the diffracted rays reaches our screen at the position at the position p1 at the position p1 now we want to now we want to calculate the path difference between these two that's way we have to be draw normal that means from the normal these two travel equal distance okay what is the extra distance traveled this is the extra distance travel that's way here we can take in this one as a c okay this is the triangle and it is angle of diffraction it is also angle of diffraction regarding that this is also angle of diffraction it is also angle of diffraction so this is the path difference what is the path difference here path difference equals to path difference equals to bc bc is the path difference how we can calculate by using this triangle by using the triangle sin theta equals to sin theta equals to this is the theta opposite is bc by hypotenuse hypotenuse is ab that implies that implies ab sin theta equals to bc ab sin theta equals to bc that implies path difference bc equals to path difference path difference bc equals to ab which is equals to the slit with of the slit that means a sin theta this is the path difference there is a relation between the path difference and also the phase difference that is phase difference equals to phase difference equals to 2 pi by lambda into path difference this is the condition what is the path difference here for us a sin theta therefore phase difference equals to phase difference equals to phase difference equals to 2 pi by lambda into a sin theta 2 pi by lambda into a sin theta this is the phase difference between these two two rays participated in the diffraction those two rays participate in the diffraction now we have to be divided this total slit into m equal parts how many equal parts we have to divide m equal parts whenever we are dividing that one into the m equal parts the amplitude is also becomes a dash generally amplitude is a whenever we are divided that amplitude it will becomes a dash and also the phase difference is also divided into uh, m times that means the phase difference uh, equals to 1 by m 1 by m into 2 pi by lambda 2 pi by lambda a sin theta 
when slit is divided into m equal parts m equal equal parts m equal parts therefore phi equals to 1 by m uh, so according to the vector addition method the resultant amplitude the resultant amplitude the resultant amplitude resultant amplitude formula is given by resultant amplitude formula becomes so r equals to a dash sin m phi by 2 by sin phi by 2 a dash sin m phi by 2 by sin phi by 2 this is the resultant amplitude okay but what we know here phi equals to 1 by m we have to substitute that one r equals to a dash sin m by 2 m by 2 into phi means here 1 by m 2 pi by lambda a sin theta 2 pi by lambda a sin theta m m cancel 2 2 cancel by sin sin phi by 2 phi phi means 1 by m into 2 pi by lambda a sin theta a sin theta by 2 2 2 once again here cancel that implies that implies r equals to a dash sin pi a sin theta by lambda pi a sin theta by lambda pi a sin theta by lambda by sin pi a sin theta by m lambda pi a sin theta by m lambda this is the resultant amplitude okay here pi a sin theta pi a sin theta by lambda we can simply call as alpha pi a sin theta by lambda equals to pi a sin theta by lambda equals to alpha c we can say alpha pi a sin theta by alpha lambda equals to alpha then r equals to r equals to a dash r equals to a dash sin of sin of pi a sin theta by lambda in place we can write alpha by sin of sin of pi a sin theta by m lambda pi a sin theta by m lambda so pi a sin theta by lambda in place we can write alpha alpha by m that implies r how we can write is a dash by sin alpha by sin alpha by alpha by m alpha by m why because for small values of theta for small values of theta values of theta sin theta equals to sin theta equals to theta according to that according to that sin alpha by m equals to alpha by m now we can write this m above side that means as a numerator we can take m a dash equals to sin alpha by alpha uh, that implies r equals to we can say this one a dash uh, m a dash equals to a r r equals to a sin alpha by alpha this is the resultant amplitude displacement okay but we know that i equals to r square what is the relation between the intensity and uh, amplitude i equals to square of the uh, intensity is directly proportional to the square of the square of the amplitude that means i equals to r square that implies a square sin square alpha by alpha square sin square alpha by alpha square i equals to a square sin square alpha by alpha square okay now condition for maximum intensity condition for principal maxima condition for principal maxima to get the maximum intensity where we can get the maximum intensity we can get the maximum intensity at the center at the center that means the rays not participate in the diffracted directly they reaches our screen at the position p naught 
at the position P0 that's where we are getting the maximum intensity is it or not okay so when we will get the maximum intensity is when R is maximum when R is maximum we can get the maximum intensity when R is the maximum we can get the maximum intensity so when R becomes maximum R is maximum when means r is maximum when alpha becomes uh, alpha tends to zero then only r becomes uh, maximum now we have to we apply the limit limit alpha tends to zero alpha tends to zero sin alpha by alpha equals to one sin alpha by alpha equals to one when sin alpha by alpha equals to one means i equals to a square into one that means i equals to a square therefore i equals to a square I, that means maximum intensity when alpha equals to zero actually alpha means what we know as we know as we know alpha equals to alpha equals to pi a sin theta by lambda pi a sin theta by lambda that means alpha equals to zero means pi a sin theta equals to zero so pi is constant a is just straight with lambda is the wavelength so whenever these two are not zeros automatically theta equals to zero so when theta equals to zero we can get the condition for the principal maximum observe here if theta equals to zero that means the rays are not participated in the diffraction they are directly reaches our screen that's why we are getting the maximum intensity okay next condition for condition for minima condition for minima for condition for minima are secondary maxima condition for secondary maxima that is good okay condition for secondary maxima to get the secondary maxima where we can get the secondary maxima okay where we can get the secondary maxima is here here we can get the secondary maxima okay what is the condition for to get the secondary maxima we have to be different differentiate for secondary maxima for secondary maxima we have to be differentiate that one d i by d alpha equals to zero that means d by d by d alpha of i means a square a square sin square alpha by alpha square sin square alpha by alpha square equals to zero so for secondary maxima di by d di by d alpha equals to uh, zero that implies d by d alpha equals to a square so that implies that implies we can if you do differentiate that one we can get we can get d i by d alpha equals to i naught into 2 sin alpha by alpha into alpha cos alpha minus sin alpha by alpha square equals to 0 that means here either may be 2 sin alpha by alpha 0 or this term becomes to 0 why because i naught is not 0 that means here either may be sin alpha is 0 either may be sin alpha is 0 or beta uh, sorry alpha cos alpha minus sin alpha equals to 0 this is not 0 why because if it is becomes 0 automatically we can get the maximum intensity that is principal maxima so that's why alpha cos alpha minus sin alpha equals to 0 that implies alpha cos alpha equals to sin alpha that implies alpha equals to sin alpha by cos alpha that implies alpha equals to tan alpha alpha equals to tan alpha this equation this equation is called transdential equation the value of alpha satisfying the above equation are we have to be obtained by using the graph if we draw the graph between the if we draw the graph between the alpha and white and alpha how it came is if we draw the graph the graph will comes like this 
alpha values you have to take on x axis y axis so 0 this is the pi by 2 this is the pi by 2 position this is the pi this is the 3 pi by 2 this is minus pi by 2 this is minus 3 pi by 2 minus pi minus 3 pi by 2 like this so if you substitute the different values of alpha and uh, on that equation we can get the graphs will be like this how means This is the values okay so this is the concept about the intensity and also here we have to calculate the minimum intensity also the condition case 3 case 3 for condition for minima condition for minima so when we will get the minimum intensity that is the condition now we have to be discussed the intensity will be minimum the intensity will be minimum that means when when this becomes so zero when this becomes zero for example sin alpha equals to zero automatically uh, this term becomes zero so whenever this term becomes zero a square into zero zero that means intensity equals to zero that means the intensity will be minimum the intensity will be will be minimum when means when means sin alpha equals to zero that implies alpha equals to plus or minus m pi where where m equals to one when m equals to one two three so on not zero why because when m equals to zero sorry alpha oh, yeah. Yeah. when uh, m equals to 0 alpha equals to 0 alpha equals to 0 means principal maximum so that's why therefore therefore from that alpha equals to 0 suppose alpha equals to pi sin 180 0 alpha uh, uh, alpha equals to pi uh, alpha equals to 2 pi 360 degrees sin 360 also 0 that means sin alpha equals to sin alpha equals to sin plus or minus sin plus or minus m pi sin plus or minus m alpha equals to what we know pi a sin theta what we know pi a pi a sin theta by lambda equals to plus or minus m pi 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 cancel that implies a sin theta equals to plus or minus m lambda plus or minus m lambda where where m equals to 1 2 3 we can get the minimum intensity okay so the diffraction intensity distribution curve will be like this that is the intensity at the center we can get the maximum intensity from the center will on the left side and the right side the intensity will be decreases like this on both sides so this is the intensity distribution curve for the diffraction it is also you have to be remember okay thank you